Hey folks, Cornell with YouTube Fishing Vids. It's time to show you my Pelican Bass Raider 10E. All right, folks, the most frequently asked question on my YouTube channel, what the heck are you fishing out of? Well, here it is, the Pelican Bass Raider 10E. I'm gonna do this review, folks, but I promise you this, this boat is dirty, so you've gotta excuse the uh, well-used Bass Raider that I've got here in front of me. I haven't even thought to clean it. It just shows how much I love this boat. I put it to it, guys, so just hang tight. Let's go over the boat. By description, specifically, it's deemed a mini pontoon style fishing boat, or as many people describe it, a mini pontoon style bass boat. When I say mini pontoon boat, this is what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over, take a look at the two mini pontoons that run down the length of this boat. That's what gives this boat its stability. And that's another frequently asked question, how stable is this boat? This boat is unbelievably stable. And with the design of the boat, and with me being at 180 pounds, you've seen how stable I stand on it. I've even tested it and stood on the gunnel and have had no problem in any way, shape, or form trying to tip this thing. Frequently asked question again by some of the bigger fellas out there. I'm a big guy. Am I going to be able to stand on the boat and be as stable and comfortable as you? Absolutely. If you're reasonably sure-footed, you should have no problem standing on this boat. It's ultra, ultra stable for its size. Speaking of size, let's go over the specs. It's real simple. 10 foot 2 inches long, has a 50 inch beam, and it's 145 pounds, which is extremely lightweight. What makes it so lightweight? Pelican's got its exclusive Ramex material. Ramex is basically a multi-layer process, which makes an extremely highly impact resistant material. If you bang this into something, it'll bounce right back to form, and it's got a UV protected exterior finish. So if you're storing it outside, like me, which is pretty much year round, it's not gonna have any issues fading. I have not had this thing fade one bit since I bought it, and I've had it outdoors for probably three and a half years straight. So the 10E in the name specifically describes the length, obviously, but it's actually about 10 foot two inches long, as I said. The E stands for electric. It's pre-wired for your trolling motor and or your sonar, and it also has a 12 volt outlet, which is super convenient for such a little boat. What a lot of people don't know about this little boat, it's actually rated for up to a 3.5 horsepower little gas motor. So if you wanted to hook this up and get this thing out there running a little quicker, get the trolling motor in the front and a nice little mini gas motor in the back, this thing will run pretty quick with a little 3.5 horsepower motor on it. So the capacity limit on this boat is two persons at 515 pounds. With persons, motor, and gear, you're looking at a total capacity of 600 pounds, which is pretty awesome for such a little boat. If you take a look around the boat, you'll find all kinds of little compartments, all kinds of places to put some lures, some hooks, a couple cup holders, a couple rod holders up here towards the front of the boat, just all kinds of little places to put things as needed. I'm asked all the time how I transport my Pelican, and it's as easy as throwing it on the top of my vehicle. I've got a roof rack. I throw it on the top of my vehicle. It's 10 foot, two inches long at 145 pounds. It's not that hard. With a little help, it's a lot easier, but I think what I'm gonna do down the road when I do decide to do something other than throw it on the top of the vehicle is I'm gonna get myself a single jet ski trailer with a couple bunks. I'm gonna customize it, make it work for the Pelican, and I think that's gonna be one of the easiest ways to go for me. For you, if you're lucky enough to have the pickup truck, easy as throwing it in the back and tying it down. If you have a flatbed trailer, that's another great option. Whatever you do, if you end up getting a Pelican, I'm sure you'll figure it out. It's not that hard a boat to transport at all. You might find this interesting, but there's not a single modification I have done to this Pelican Bass Raider from the day I purchased it. And specifically, where did I buy it? I bought it at Dick's Sporting Goods, to be honest with you. They had one in stock. I got a great deal on it. They run anywhere from 599 bucks up to, I've seen them for over 700 to 800 bucks, depending on where you're gonna buy them. But, uh, not a single modification. I haven't done a single thing to this. What I'm actually sitting on is one GoPro mount that I stuck there, and that's the only thing I've done to this boat. Folks, there's all kinds of great things you can do to these boats to modify them, but I didn't find a need. I didn't even find a need to get my mount done for my Lowrance. So I'm gonna show you how I get it all set up here in a second. I'm gonna put it all together and show you exactly how it looks when I've got all my accessories in it. So you guys just hang tight. Let me show you a few more ideas. All right, folks, here's pretty much everything I put in the boat minus my fishing tackle. I got the two seats the Pelican comes with, got the two batteries that I use, the chargers that I use for the batteries, the Lowrance, I got the battery for the Lowrance. There's even a floor cushion and a great trolling motor by Minn Kota. There's the life jacket and the throw cushion in the corner. So that's pretty much everything we're gonna put in the boat. I'm gonna show you how I set it up. I'm gonna show you how this is all laid out, so stay tuned. All right, folks, let's start with the batteries. That's a, another question that's asked all the time. What batteries do you use for your trolling motor and what trolling motor you use? Well, I'm just going to start with the batteries to start. They're actually right from Walmart. They're just the Everstart Max and or just standard Everstart. I've got one of each in a group size 29 DC. So that battery has plenty of power, plenty of longevity for what ultimately is my Minn Kota 55 thrust Endura Max, which I'll show you in a second here. 
So bottom line, how much life do you get out of those batteries? How much time do you get on the water? Well guys, that all depends. It really, really depends on the wind, 10 pounds now, far you're going and it depends on how much you're using the batteries in general. But I gotta be honest with you, with a 55 pound thrust Minn Kota Endura Max with a variable speed, I'll go over that a little bit later too, I'm getting a lot of life out of those batteries. I've gone anywhere from five to 12 hours on one battery and it all varies and it all depends on how much I'm using them, but these batteries really, really hold up. I strongly, strongly recommend you always, always have two batteries with you even if you're going to be out there for four to five hours if you're in wind if you're really hustling and running and gunning you may want that spare battery regardless and depending on how long you have those batteries also keep in mind they do wear down there are times that you might find that that battery is gets a little older tends to wear down a little bit you never know when you're going to need it so two batteries really important another really important point about these batteries is that you have to have a good maintenance routine if you get home after a long day of fishing you have to have a good battery charger waiting for you at home like this shoemaker up to 15 amp battery charger the second i get home i plug up the battery i get the green light and get it fully charged since i have two i go back and forth between the two batteries and as one's fully charged i just clip it onto the next and keep a full charge in both that helps me get the most life and the most longevity out of my batteries okay folks there it is that's the endura max 55 pound thrust minco a trolling motor the best feature of the endura max over some of their lesser price point models is that it has a variable speed if you don't have a variable speed on your trolling motor and you have a lightweight boat like the pelican you are stuck with just the set speeds that does not give you the boat control that a variable speed can give you if you've got wind to fight if you've got current to fight that variable speed helps you dial into the exact resistance of the wind or the current that you're dealing with to help keep your boat perfectly positioned for a great day of fishing so that's one of the most important features i think i got out of my endura max you can manage with those other uh, lesser price point models the c2s and such but i'll tell you the variable speeds is the selling point for me if you notice the floor on this pelican it's kind of raised and lumpy it's not the most comfortable thing to stand on so a lot of the things people do to modify these is to put, put ply board down or you know ply board with some master turf and they and they customize it to be more of a flat raised surface but one thing that i found uh, to make this as comfortable as you can imagine is to get a little floor mat in it so check this out and there it is just a simple floor mat a cushion floor mat that i picked up at costco something you put in your kitchen your bathroom i'm telling you folks right now this thing is unbelievable for a long day of fishing you want to be more comfortable than you'd even be on a basic boat or a bass boat deck this thing is ultra comfortable and ultra ultra cushioned here's another accessory that i have on my boat the lawrence elite 4x chirp that's my sonar depth finder and there's the battery that i use for it so basically these two in unison is a perfect package let me show you actually where i put this battery i actually put this battery behind <laughs> It's going to be hard to see, but I put this basically behind the big battery. So that's where this is going to go. I do not have a mount for this Lowrance, folks. I basically keep this Lowrance, and if you've watched me in any of my videos, I don't have a mount. I don't have any place that I put this Lowrance permanently. I can pick this up and move it anywhere that I want with these long cords around the boat to put it in my lap and look at it, to angle it right for the for the sun angles and things like that so basically this Lowrance is just free float and like I said I've done no modifications to this boat I've done no customization I just have this Lowrance just floating free for me to use anytime I want a lot of times I'll just basically sit right here in the corner and it just sits there for me to look at as needed I just pick it up and move it around and put it on my lap and do what I need to do speaking of putting it on my lap let me show you the way the seats work in this Pelican hang tight all right so there we go my Pelican comes with two seats swivel seats and my model actually had foldable backrests which is pretty convenient so there's the two seats on my Pelican which is really convenient what's really nice about these seats is that you know as a requirement by law we're responsible to have a throw cushion let me show you what I do with my throw cushion in unison with these seats so here I've got my throw cushion and obviously you don't want that to take up floor space on your boat when it's such a small boat you want to find ways to be uh, good with your space so there you go that's where my throw cushion stays it serves as a really comfortable seat cushion and there's the responsibility managed you know for having a throw cushion on your boat so yeah this is ultra comfortable great place and with that foldable seat it folds down right on top of it and pretty compact and easy now another thing i do with my seats is of course you're responsible to have your life jackets with you now if you're choosing not to wear them that's that's teach their own uh if i'm not always wearing my life jacket if i'm out on a real calm lake let me show you where i put the life jacket to keep it out of the way so here i have my life jacket and i've got this foldable backrest to my seat watch this
That's all I do. So now that life jacket's not on the floor. It's easily accessible. The throw cushion's easily accessible, but that's just a really comfortable seat now. So bottom line is when you don't see me standing and fishing, this is where I am, basically running around the lake using my trolling motor, getting from place to place. Ultra comfortable, super cushioned. Got a nice cushioned backrest. And guys, this second seat, it's never here. I can't tell you, I can't tell you that I've honestly ever used two seats on this boat. And even when I'm fishing with two people, watch what I do. I bottom line, take this one seat, I put it right in the center of the boat, and now I've got equal amount of room in the back and equal amount of room in the front. If anyone wants to take a load off and take a break, all they gotta do is take a seat and the other person can stand and continue to fish or even just sit on the gunnel. This boat's so stable, sitting down on the side of the boat isn't gonna tip it, it's gonna be super stable and everyone's gonna be comfortable. It just leaves that much more room in the boat to fish. Lots and lots of questions about how many rod and reel combinations I'm comfortable keeping on my Pelican. Well, I've had up to eight rods and reels on the boat at, at times. You know, there's, there's a pretty easy way to carry them now. I don't have any modifications or customizations done to the boat when it comes to strap down system, which I probably should have and I probably recommend you do too. But eight rods, four, four and four on each side, no brainer. Uh, let me show you pretty much how I've got it set up. There's the spinning tackle. You just kind of stack one on top of each other, which is pretty easy. And the same deal on the other side for the bait casters. If you have a partner with you in the boat, you're basically gonna have your partner come on to the other side and you basically have your reels opposite each other and your t rod tips coming at each other. So that's pretty much the way it's set up and that's the way it goes when it comes to stacking your rods and reels on the boat. Pretty easy deal, plenty of space for your rods. All right, folks, here I sit on my Pelican Bass Raider, pretty much set up exactly the way I have it set up for a day of fishing. The last thing I'm gonna go over with you folks is exactly how I fish this thing. Now, if I'm cruising down the lake and I'm on my way to my fishing spot, this chair is actually slid back to the back of the boat. So I've got a good reach on my Endura Max trolling motor handle. So I'm cruising down the lake full speed, getting to where I need to go. Now, when I'm to my fishing spot, I'm putting up this seat. It's getting out of my way so I have the full stern of the boat to work with. That actually goes up towards the bow. I'm fishing out of the back. I normally have my GoPro back here with its tripod legs sticking in the two rod holders in the front of the boat and I get my hands on the trolling motor and now I'm fishing from the back. So bottom line is I'm using the variable speed trolling motor in reverse to control the boat as needed. I put it in forward and I swing around and I put the boat in a position as I need that way as well. But bottom line is I've got all this room in the back of my boat to fish. So I've got my Lowrance here, I've got my battery in front of me, tons of space. It's just an awesome setup, guys. So if you watch me in my videos, you'll see that I'm actually fishing with my hands on the trolling motor and I'm actually going in reverse from the stern. So folks, if there are any more questions, if there's anything more you wanna know that I didn't go over in this boat review, feel free to ask in the comments below. If there's any other suggestions or tips, or if you're a Pelican Bass Raider owner and you wanna throw something out there about how you modify your boat or how you customize your Pelican or any mini pontoon bass boat or mini pontoon fishing boat for that matter. Feel free to put some input in the comments below. I'm sure everyone would love to hear them. So folks, as always, I appreciate you joining me. As always, I appreciate you subscribing. And until we meet again, over and out.